Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today. Today, we'll be talking about hairline short circuits. Hairline short circuits can cause a lot of problems and a lot of headaches, but what are they? Hairline short circuits happen when a sliver of copper, no wider than a strand of hair, connects two unrelated signals. Because these slivers are so small, it's not something that'll jump out at you when doing a visual inspection of your board. And even knowing where to look, it's still difficult to actually see with the naked eye and often goes unnoticed until the assembled PCBs are put through a series of quality control tests. Now, unfortunately, if a short circuit is detected this late in production, then it's guaranteed to cause an unnecessary loss in time, extending production runs, and raw material costs. And sometimes, the time taken to identify a single hairline short circuit and the cost of fixing it can cost more than the board. More than the PCB, yeah. Um, so, how do they happen? To understand how these short circuits happen, you need to understand the general process of PCB manufacturing. PCBs are typically made of a copper laminated on a non-conductive substrate. A common method to transfer the circuitry onto the PCB is through photo engraving, where a silkscreen laminate containing the image of the circuit is placed on top of the PCB with a photoresist coating. The PCB is then exposed to an ultraviolet light source and any areas that are not covered by the silkscreen will be etched away by an ammonia-based solution. Now, sometimes long slivers of copper are etched and fully detached, but before they can fully dissolve, they land somewhere they shouldn't, connecting two nets and creating a short circuit. That's fully detached, or full detachment. Another way a hairline short circuit can form is when a sliver of copper is actually intended to remain on the board and is therefore protected by resist. But if the sliver is narrow enough, the copper baths may etch away underneath the copper to partially attach the sliver. Now with the sliver hanging on by a thread, flips over onto another feature and it creates a short. And let me just show you here. Um, normally we think of copper traces on our board as perfectly, you know, square, but that's not the case. Uh, during production or during uh, manufacturing, what happens is the sides will be etched away. So there is uh, some etching here that occurs. So it's not a perfect square. But if your uh, trace is very narrow, there's no support up here. And this is where it can. Uh, detach, where the copper can detach, fold on itself, and connect two, uh, two copper features it shouldn't. And here's an, an example of this. Uh, very narrow over here and over here. Maybe the etching can happen underneath. Again, it'll fold up and on itself. But there are things you can do. One is during testing. Um, make no assumptions as to what your manufacturer is going to do in terms of uh, electrical testing. Um, write, write it down in your notes that, hey, I want a flying probe test or I want a bed of nails test to, elect to check the electrical connections of my board. And when you do so, make sure you send in a net list. If you do not send in a net list, some manufacturers may just connect the power uh, on your board and say, hey, it powers on, it works, great, it passes testing. That's if you don't send in a net list. If you send in a net list, they can go through your board and check every connection. Very important to do so, so don't forget. The other thing you can do during, uh, or as a designer during design time, is design with larger clearances. That's not always possible with boards today getting smaller and more dense, but if your constraints allow it, design with, um, with larger clearances, just so you don't have you know, cases where the copper really narrows down. The other thing is don't push the limits of your manufacturer. If your manufacturer says they can, uh, they can create a board with five mil clearance between uh, copper features, don't design with five mils in mind, design with six mils in mind to give yourself a little wiggle room. You know the board's gonna come out right. So um, do those things, test, and uh, larger clearances, know your manufacturer limits. If you do these, you will greatly reduce the chances of getting a hairline short circuit. 
Of course, it's not 100% guaranteed, but you greatly reduce your chances. So, thank you.